It just keeps getting more interesting in Warwick week after week. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Welcome aboard. Nice to have you in on this Tuesday evening. A uh, program note, we recorded this show yesterday. Uh, sometimes as we get toward the holidays, things get a little funky around here in terms of schedule. Uh, but where else can you find a program like this each weeknight, five nights a week? Uh, sometimes it's a good, bad break, you know, because I don't get a chance to opine on that which happened today. And there's always plenty going on, whether it's at home or in Washington, certainly. Uh, but it gives me a chance to kind of broaden out a conversation that sometimes takes a lengthy period of time. And tonight we're going to do that. Uh, it is not a, uh, a new conversation to talk about some of the interesting aspects of the relationship between, between the firefighter union and their contract in the city of Warwick, the second largest city in the state, of course. Um, or is it? I always get confused. Warwick, it, Warwick overtook Cranston, right? Yes. yes. Anita's confirming. And now she'll double check because we like to be correct about those things. Uh, but you know, we, we've had we've had copious amounts of conversation about the city of Warwick. Uh, it's in transition right now, right? It's got a brand new mayor. You're 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 rolling out from Scott Avedesian, the former mayor who was there for gosh a long time, and uh, was at Ripton. Is at Ripton now at the uh, or as we say in Rhode Island, Ripton. Uh, anyway, it's it's a. It's a fluid and messy place when it comes to some of these contracts. And I think the taxpayer's anxiety is that perhaps this is the kind of stuff that may have more widespread implications. So what is it? Let me show you a headline here. This was the first conversation that uh, got so much attention. Uh, the, and, and, and I want to leave it there. Uh, Kev, just kill the other headline because we'll, we'll bring that up in segment number two. Uh, come on out to my guest. Uh, Rob Cody is is here. He's the watchdog for the city of Warwick, as I call him. And he's the guy, along with Ken Block, who brought me the first conversation, which was about sick pay. Unused sick pay. Unused sick pay. Welcome. Good to have you. Thank you. Uh, I, just to set the scene for everybody who's seeing you for the first time uh, in Warwick, that probably isn't the case, but across the state. You do this stuff because you pay attention to these things that we are going to talk about because... I pay for them, and I like to know what I'm getting for for my dollar, and more importantly, I'd like to know what the ramifications are for my children in the future. You mean you're just a concerned taxpayer? That's it. Um, there aren't many like you from town to town. I've said that how many dozens of times on the air? Quite a few. The air. Uh, you recognize that. So... You become a little bit of an anomaly in the sense, or not you become, you are a little bit of an anomaly in the sense that this doesn't happen in many communities. I have made the speech that if we had a Cody in each community, things would be a lot tighter around there. Uh, your thought on that? Everybody knows we're paying an enormous amount of taxes for very few services. I just need to know that the taxes that we're paying are being uh, put towards good use, that uh, the monies are being spent efficiently and effectively, uh, that there's no waste, fraud, and abuse. And unfortunately, in Warwick, at every juncture where I've questioned particular uses of taxpayer dollars, I've seen the waste, the fraud, and the abuse. Um, when you fast forward that down the line, all of that ends up in the laps of the next generation. And that's just unacceptable. Because when you look at the tax base in Warwick and how it's going to keep accumulating, your next generation is going to move. You understand what I'm saying, though. There is a, I think, it, I, I want to broaden this out a little bit because people always, hmm. And, you're, and you have enemies in, in, in the city of Warwick who, who try to cast you in some wacky type of gadfly light. I don't buy it, never have. I think most of what you've brought to me has been authentic or 
or well-researched or well-intended for the, the motives that you're speaking about. But you've gotten to some great lengths over time. And we've had this reset conversation, you and I, I don't know how many times. You've surveilled DPW vehicles. You've surveilled fire trucks. You've, you've provided copious amounts of tape of that to public officials it's about data, right? and, and to media about whether the efficiencies that they say are occurring are occurring. You go way past the extra mile uh, for this mission. Well, I like my arguments to be bulletproof. So you've known me long enough to know that I don't open my mouth until I have official city documents in my possession that have come directly from the city. And you pursue those, and you knock I on doors. I pursue them, and you know, I knock on the door once, and then I knock it down. <laughs> it's that simple. <laughs> but once uh, I get the documents, I perform analysis, I have that analysis checked by another individual like Mr. Cushman, who's a very smart guy, and then we come up with a point of argument to say, why is this happening? Let me, so I'll end this part of the conversation with this. Is it, is it, I'm just thinking out loud, is it fair to label you as citizen vigilante? No, it's just a, a concerned citizen that's paying attention to where his money's being spent. Simple. I do the same thing with my checkbook. So let's go back to the first saga in the recent run here, which is the firefighter union agreements, uh, the execution of such, this notion of side agreements off of contracts, which seems to might be a problem not just in the city of Warwick. We learned in East Greenwich we mm -hmm. have the same kind of issues, and we've had the town manager who's since been canned, Gail Corrigan, uh, Correct. just got popped in the middle of that whole political fracas, which seems to me from a bird's eye to be a real power, election power move by the firefighters there. And I want everybody to know, firefighters are not the enemy here. I'm guessing they're not the enemy here. I mean, we just lost one in, War in yeah, Worcester it's just, it's, this past weekend. It's tragic. Uh, uh, you know, and each of the firefighter unions comport themselves somewhat differently. They're not all lumped in the same boat. I, uh, you know, I long fought for the Providence firefighters uh, because I thought they were being wronged in their negotiations and the like. And so it's not every firefighter union, da 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 da. Again, this is not about the. Uh, the actions of the firefighters, this is not about the services to the community. This is about a fiscal conversation of what's right and what's wrong, what the community can afford, and what, on behalf of the community, the elected officials have negotiated and then somehow gotten changed in the background. Right. That's so, what this conversation is about. Okay, so, you know, why don't we do this? Because that, that kind of leaves it where it needs to be. We're going to pause. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about the first saga, which was the sick pay saga. And then we're going to talk about the next one, which is the vacation saga. Stay with us. Oh, we're back. No music? <laughs> we're, we're, we're back. Uh, and so here, here is the, the headline that kind of represented the first saga that Rob Cody and I are, are going to talk about. And we've already had a show on this. Uh, Ken Black was here with you. And uh, Tell me about, give me the, the highlights on, on this one so everybody remembers what the problem was. Okay, so on the unused sick time, firefighters are allowed to accumulate up to 140 sick days. They get 20 sick days per year that are allocated monthly, one and two-thirds per month. Uh, whatever they don't use at the end of the year, they are allowed to be paid out 75% of that. So in other words, if you have perfect attendance and you don't call out sick, you get paid out for 15 sick days. What took place was behind the scenes in the side deal, they manipulated that to being paid out monthly and they were allowed to carry over the residual of that 75%, another 25%. So firefighters could take five, six, seven, eight days of sick time and still be paid for perfect attendance. So the data that we were able to extract from the city after fighting tooth and nail substantiates every single man, how many sick days they took, how many they were entitled to, how much they were paid, how much they were overpaid, and what percentage they were overpaid. Okay. We have some, we have some full screens here, uh, Kevin. If you, if you put a couple of them up, I'll, I will 
Um, I'll be able to walk everybody through these things, depending on the size of the screen that you have. Um, this is, uh, actually, that's the vacation accrual uh, graphic that we will use later. Just run through some of these full screen. There you go. That's the one I'm looking for. Thank you. Tentative agreement terms. The third paragraph there points to unused sick leave. And if you can read it, that's great. If you can't, I'll read it for you. It says, the city shall pay three-fourths of the amount of such accrued unused sick leave subject to the provisions of the contract. The sick leave payment shall be calculated one quarter of the employee's weekly salary multiplied by the total amount of unused accumulated days of sick leave. Accrued mm -hmm. is the key word there. Mm -hmm. There was a side agreement that was made in the city of Warwick that actually paid as they went. That's correct. Literally paid monthly. That's correct. Correct? Mm -hmm. It didn't appear in an agreement that the city council ratified. Right. But what's really important there is this fine print that says these sections. Those sections, when you read them in the pre-existing contract, say that that payment shall be made on the 30th day of March of the following year. There is so nothing an annualized in here, payment. Right. There is nothing in here to say we're going to monetize these unused sick days monthly. That was the secret side deal. And as, as you know, Dan, as I've sent you this document, subsequent to our last visit here, through an access to public records, we received the actual uh, instruction sheet on how to game the system. That was went from someone in authority to the bookkeeper. Well, the paperwork is archaic, correct? Well, it's all done with pencil and paper with eraser marks. There's nothing computerized. And when you don't have a system of, of uh, a fingerprint thumb, uh, time clock or punching in or badging in, there's no way that they can obtain any level of accuracy or accountability or traceability that any particular guy is on site at any particular time. So. The value over the this has been going on for a handful of years, correct? This is since uh, 2012 contract. 2012. So and the side deal was April 13th to uh, April 2013. Right. So over the course of this of these years, what do you think is the accrued overage that taxpayers have had to cough up for something that appeared? on the side of the contract not ratified by the Warwick City Council? Well, from 2015 to 17, it's, it's close to $300,000. So now we've got to go back to 2012. So you're going to see half a million dollars, without a doubt, on the side deal for the unused sick pay scheme. And now you're going to add in the second scheme of the vacation. All right. When we come back, we'll talk about the second scene, uh, scene, scheme. Scene three, scheme two, when we come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this brings us to a, a new headline. And it was so funny last week, after I saw this, this headline, I, uh, I was chiding the Providence Journal for uh, what they represented to be an exclusive investigation, because I'm seeing Warwick, and I'm seeing firefighter contract, and I'm seeing benefits dispute, and I'm seeing Rob Cody work by clear viewage. Um, and I said, yeah, you know what, everyone's, you know, everyone's an exclusive, blah, 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 until I... It just dawned on me as I was reading it for like the third time. Wait a second. I've been working with Cody and Block for months and months on the accrued sick time side deal. Unused sick time. Unused sick time caper. Uh, this is the unused, unused vacation, vacation time. caper. caper. Uh, and it has its own special nuances, but some common ground as well, because it seems like this scheme uh, has developed from another side agreement. Right. They both have uh, a couple things in common, and what it really represents is you had a certain set of initiatives that were bargained in good faith, that were made public to the city council. Uh, that were ratified by the city council and then in both situations behind the scenes the department usurped the authority of the legislative branch and went in and decided that they would pencil in their own uh, method of receiving more compensation than what has been bargained in good faith publicly and that was enacted so after 
they decided to pencil in their own little secret side deal. Uh, the formal historical contract is supposed to go to the administration and to the administration city solicitor for a, a final set of eyes on it before the contract provisions are enacted. Well, that didn't happen. So the legislative branch government was usurped by a Meaning union. the city council. City council. The mayor's office never put the set of eyes on it, which is their responsibility. The mayor the now. Former mayor, former Abedesian. mayor, Abedesian. He now points to the fact that it was the responsibility of the city solicitor and the uh, finance director, uh, neither of which will answer any questions. So, h however, this plays out, it shows that there has been a complete level of incompetence and sloppiness where contracts that affect the taxpayer have been manipulated, knowingly and willfully manipulated, which causes payments to be paid out that were not negotiated for the taxpayer, or on behalf of the taxpayer, by their elected officials. All right. Well, that, that, was, uh, that was well summaried. So let's talk about what it is. Of course, sloppy and, and willfully fraudulent are two different things. Uh, I would think that at this juncture, there's got to be some law enforcement interest in this conversation to determine whether or not we have willful fraud. You would hope so. We, 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 well, and, you know, uh, let's put it this way. There's all sorts of uh, a high-level rumor that that, that that kind of stuff is going on. Correct. All right. So let me, let's go back to this, and let's put up a couple of these exhibits, and I'll, I'll, I'll figure out which one's the, the applicable one to this conversation. All right, so here you go. So voluntary vacation accrual system. Is this the 2012 version? This is the 2012. This is the important okay, line number so two. Okay, so line number two. For the purposes of a lump sum, da-da-da-da-da-da-da, uh, you'll be paid at the rate of one-fifth of the weekly pay for each vacation day accrued. Correct. Okay? All right. Leave it there, and we'll come back to the other blow-up in a second. That seems to make sense, right? Right. That's the historical document for the from 2012. For the payment as a lump sum in full upon retirement and termination when you're going out the door on your accrued unused vacation days, you will get one-fifth of the week's pay. The week's pay because so a day there are five for a day. days in a work week. Correct. To get a day for a day. Makes sense. Right. And that's been the historical language as far as the contracts go back. You have no quarrel with that? None at all. Okay. They earned them, they should be paid And for in them. the second exhibit? This is the 2015 contract. 2015 contract. Changed from one-fifth to one-fourth. Correct. Why do you think that happened? Because somebody decided to change a keystroke and give themselves an extra 25% profit going out the door. Warwick firefighters work on a four-day-on, four-day-off basis. That's irrelevant. Why? Because the 2012 historical contract shows one-fifth. Here's the tentative agreement where changing that from one-fifth to one-fourth was not made public. No fiscal note was produced on the financial impact to that. It was not brought forth to the city council, okay. but it was changed after the contract was ratified. So these two, these two things that we just recently put up, they're you know, the copies of the vacation accrual system. This document exists in what, in what platform? That is... Is this the side agreements? No. no. Or is the, the second one the side agreements? The, the second one is the side agreement where the language that was ratified through the tentative agreements, through the bar, collective bargaining process, that was changed. There was no collective bargaining and no agreement to change the 2012 contract from one-fifth to one-fourth. Why did it end up in print? Because the same reason why the unused sick pay wound up in print. Once the contract is ratified, it goes back to the department, and then they add those cut-and-paste changes into the historical contract for the record. Which department? The fire department. Each department does their own. Then so it's the supposed fire to go, administration, right, so to speak. At that point, it's supposed to go to the mayor's office, where the mayor 
and the city solicitor, I spoke to fact check it to make sure it matches the agreements. That the agreement meets what is now in the historical data, in this historical contract. Gotcha. But that's not what took place. Somewhere there was a change in the verbiage which produced an excessive payout that was not bargained in good faith and that was not ratified by the legislative branch. I just want to, Kevin, if you put up the first full screen on this that we originally put up with has this tentative agreement terms on it, I just want you to understand that this tentative agreement term was, 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 a, was dated when? Uh, that was dated uh, May 15th, 2015. Gotcha. This is the agreement that was eventually ratified and signed and signed by the council. It was, it, the tentative agreement was signed by the mayor, the fire uh, union president, and the city solicitor. And I then was ratified as, by the council. As I'm looking through Article 2, which talks about benefits, paid holidays, unused sick leave, disability, salaries, medical insurance. Unused vacation time is not in there. Not even listed in that agreement. So these other things that you're reading end up being down the road, and the diligence wasn't done to match that which was put in writing between the fire department and the city to match what the council had agreed to. Correct. Correct. Right. So you have okay. the finance department was negligent, the administration was negligent, the city solicitor was negligent and the fire department themselves somehow changed the collective bargaining agreement and they usurped the legislative branch of government. How many people do you estimate went out with a bigger check than they should have gotten? From what I understand... Without been, naming names. From what I understand, there's been 33 so far in the last year and a half. Now, I can tell you this. In June of 2016, I asked for the names of the people that retired that month I got a list of seven people that gave the breakdown of their unused sick pay and their unused vacation pay. And again, the, reportedly the firefighters don't accrue vacation pay anymore. No, of course it is. Unused vacation they get, depending on how long you're there, you get 12 days, 20 days, 24 days. So if you have 24 days of vacation given to you on January 1st, and on January 7th you retire, as the former chief did, you go out the door with those 24 unused vacation days. From the year before. Correct. Gotcha. So, that amount of those seven men was eighty-five thousand dollars in unused vacation pay. Right. Bottom line here, what, what, where, where is this whole thing going? Uh, where's it going? Uh, that's up. To, that's up to the mayor and the, and the city council. That this By needs the way, to be an investigation. In that province journal story, they admitted big problem and they stopped the process. So it's not just you. Mm -hmm. They said, "Oh boy, we're not happy." And no one seems to be accountable. And but the problem, Dan, is since when is it the responsibility of the residents of the city to oversee the actions of the legislative branch and the executive branch to make sure they're doing the job that they took an oath of office to do? So who brings out the next scandal? Is it me or is it Ken? Or could it be both of us? <laughs> <laughs> seems like you get more. Oh, yeah. All right. Did you get all that? Appreciate your visit. Thank you. Final word when we come back. A correction and a point of information. Cranston, population-wise, has edged out Warwick as the second largest city in Rhode Island. Number two, anybody of any capacity who has any thought or information on what we just did is welcome to come here and tell me or Rob Cody that they're missing it and making a mountain out of a molehill, or he's wrong. The silence is deafening. See you tomorrow night on the radio at 3 on WPRL. Good night.